they already had the machine geared up against me. The moment that they felt there was a leak, every finger pointed to Jeffrey Sterling. The, the word retaliation is not thought of when anyone looks at the experience that I've had with the agency, then I just think you're not looking. The Invisible Man. CIA whistleblower Jeffrey Sterling, January 26th, 2015. Breaking news, Jeffrey Sterling, the former CIA officer, has been convicted of espionage. He faces years in prison. Sterling is the man who the CIA is blaming for giving the national defense information to the New York Times reporter James Risen. The case centers around a secret CIA operation to give faulty nuclear plans to Iran in an effort to slow down the country's nuclear ambitions. Sterling denies leaking to James Risen. He did nothing wrong. He did nothing illegal. Um, he expressed concern for our country. I reached out to the Senate Intelligence Committee. I gave them my concerns about an operation I was involved in, and I thought it could have an impact, a negative impact, on our soldiers going into Iraq. Operation Merlin was a cockamamie, harebrained scheme developed by covert action operators who had lots of money. The Senate Intelligence Committee and the House Committee they have clearances to hear this. That is what they are there for. They are there for oversight. They are not oversight committees. They are overlook committees. Before reporting Operation Merlin to the Congress, Sterling had sued the CIA for racial discrimination. Sterling became the first African-American case officer to sue the CIA for racial discrimination. He claimed a pattern of prejudice derailed his career. shortly after 9-11, I felt anger, anger to the point, you know, I want to do something about this. I will drop my discrimination claims. I want to come back and help. The response I got at that offer of dropping my suit was, you're fired. John Brennan, the uh, head of the CIA at the moment, he personally came down to the administrative office to tell me that I was fired. Someone told me, like, well, you pulled on Superman's cape. Eventually, the court dismissed Sterling's discrimination lawsuit on grounds that the trial would reveal state secrets. After uh, I had been fired, I had nowhere to go. No one would hire me. I was living out of my car, essentially, and I had hit rock bottom. By happenstance, friends had just had a baby in the St. Louis area, uh, a friend that I had gone to college with. Um, they had a small room for me there, and uh, it was difficult to come to that realization that I go from being a case officer in the Central Intelligence Agency, I have a law degree, to I'm a Manny. Uh, but such is life, and I was there, and it always adds a bit of joy to you, you know, holding and taking care of a newborn baby. So you're part of our family. We're a package deal. I got the job with uh, as a company, health insurance company. That was great. I, I felt, uh, okay, things are turning around. And I thought, well, why don't I put myself out there? My lovely assistant, Holly, here. And that's how I met Holly, uh, my wife. And um, we, we hit it right off. Jeffrey and I have an incredibly strong foundation in our relationship. It's been since day one. No, this is won't. not I'm my kidding. forte. I'm kidding. I like to eat. <laughs> we met via Match.com, and that was our first date. Second date, but we said we are going to get married on the beach barefoot. And that's exactly what happened. We got married in Jamaica. So life is just feeling good. You know, I hadn't heard anything. I've left that world behind. And I'm moving on. I had been getting calls from previous attorneys that they're still looking into me. Um, and that didn't, didn't make any sense to me. It's like, why? Shortly after that, you know, I receive information about there's a possible leak of information and that everyone's pointing a finger at me. Evidently, they had never taken me out of their sights. 
was like, I need to find some help. So I went to a local congressman, Lacey Clay, and one of his staff members looked at me very succinctly and said, you should just leave the country. And that, that hurt. There's a black man who works with a black representative, knowing what we've gone through in this country, and me trying to exert and stand up for my civil rights. You mentioned CIA to him. And the only response that I got was, I should run away. Well, my mother didn't teach me that. You don't run away. You stand up for yourself. I grew up in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, which is uh, about two hours south of St. Louis, right on the Mississippi River. I was the youngest of five brothers. One went to the Army, uh, one was in the Navy, uh, and another went to the Marines. My uh, stand up for yourself, be yourself sort of attitude that was instilled to me by my mother. Despite this extraordinary ordeal that Jeffrey and I have been through for over a decade, we both believe in standing up for ourselves and we'll face this till the end, no matter the consequences. January 2006, reporter James Risen revealed information about Operation Merlin in his book, State of War. In 2006, they started coming to our doorstep. They flew me out to Virginia um, and I was went to FBI headquarters and was interrogated for seven hours and then the next day they surrounded the home actually they just went methodically through the home they went to my family they went to my employer just incredibly intrusive incredibly disturbing your whole sense of security in your home and privacy was violated we were wondering well, the next thing has to be they're going to arrest me we go over four years of nothing, not hearing a word. If I was so dangerous, you know, where, where have they been? January 6, 2011. Sterling is accused of leaking details about a botched CIA operation in Iran to a New York Times journalist. He made his initial court appearance today in leg shackles. Prosecutors allege that Sterling was trying to get revenge on the CIA when he served as a source for Ryzen about an agency operation meant to deter Iran's nuclear program. So one morning I wake up and I'm behind bars. And for what? I didn't do anything. Actually, three days before the trial starts and the government made a move that the judge did not like. And basically, the government said they couldn't go forward. So that day in September 2011, I mean, we were like, okay, oh, this is over. And our lawyers gave some indication they thought it was done. But the government appealed, and that process took three years. And my wife had to sit, you know, with this sort of Damocles over our head. And in responses from the government, it was all about the approach to the reporter to the mainstream press, it became the Ryzen case. And I'm the defendant, I'm the one facing the charges. I was uh, convicted on January uh, 26th, uh, 2015. It was uh, a shock. I'm still in shock by, by the verdict. And a former CIA officer faces decades in prison after being convicted of espionage. A federal jury in Virginia found Jeffrey Sterling guilty on all nine counts against him Monday. Five weeks after Sterling's conviction, news broke that former CIA director David Petraeus got a plea deal with no jail time for leaking top secret information. Top three past CIA directors, including Leon Panetta, including General David Petraeus, including Brennan, have all leaked covert identities 
and suffer no consequence for it. Very disturbing, not only the selective uh, prosecution, uh, but also the fact no African Americans on the jury. All of the evidence presented by the prosecution was circumstantial email and phone call metadata without content of any incriminating nature. The conviction is a major victory for the Obama administration and its unprecedented crackdown on government leaks. They shut me up with my discrimination case and they've closed the door with the criminal case. They're trying to make an example of Sterling. I don't know whether he did it or not, but whoever did it, did a service to our country, because our country needs to know. Thankful I can experience the tremendous amount of support that we received, not only locally, but essentially globally. It's very encouraging. We are surrounded by wonderful friends um, and family. Our family decided to make a GoFundMe account um, to assist with um, finances for Jeffrey and I. It's been um, very well received. We just, we love you and thank you for your support. Oh, you're welcome, Allison. Um, it was over 50,000 people that signed the petition to drop the charges against Jeffrey. All right, talk to you soon. It's been incredibly difficult to watch him not being able to change the circumstances. <laughs> marry me again? Absolutely. I married the love of my life and my best friend. My greatest fear is Jeffrey going to jail. I'm absolutely scared of me uh, being sent to prison, you know, particularly for something that I did not do. But uh, I am comfortable with myself and the choices that I've made because I know I wouldn't have done it any other way. I like who I see in the mirror.